Good afternoon, everybody. At the onset, let me thank Nero Bhai Patel, Nikhil Patel, Ketan Bhai Patel from the Chirotar Education Institute for inviting me here. <coughs> but coming as a chief guest at this type of a function gives me a sense of I'm growing, I'm growing old. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, you start giving sermons when you start stop practicing. But that's not the story. I'm not going to give sermons and not I have stopped practicing. We'll have a heart-to-heart -heart talk, and that is more important. Now, <clears throat> it's one of the rare occasions when I'm talking without the PowerPoint slide presentation showing you the data and saying that this is this, this is that. It's absolutely without any scientific <clears throat> presentation. The concept of health is well is there for ages and centuries. Unfortunately, what happens as we industrialize or we say that we become developed, we become underdeveloped in our traditional education. Our grandmother's advice, our mother's advice, you always <laughs> decline on that. And this is what you can see from the results of the health checkup data. Now, the results of the health checkup data is not very uh, surprising to me. In fact, two days back, the, there was a data published in JAMA, which is the most important international journal in medicine. Now, there are 640 billion, million obese patients in the world, and number of obese patients in the world exceeds number of undernourished. That means from undernourishment, from poverty, we are going towards a disease called richness and obesity. And why this has happened? This is all product of the development. Say so when you have a developed situation, like what I was discussing with Mirabai Patel, how much is the school ground? That is what is more important. All my childhood, 99% of the students came to the school either walking or on the bicycle. Those who were staying far away, they came on bicycle, but it was all physical exercise. Today, when I go to the, when I used to go to drop my children to the school, I used to see 99% either coming in the cars or coming in the school bus. Hardly anybody walking. Now, walking or cycling is not still possible in places like Mumbai, but the places like Andab, uh, Anand, it is still a possibility. And <laughs> unless you have this type of a physical exertion going on, the physical activity, the obesity is likely to increase. The physical exertion in all forms has significantly gone down and one of the important factor in that is too much of a pressure on the children to perform a lot. Every mother or every father wants, they are like a super moms and super dads. They want their children to do extremely well in the exams. At the same time, how can every, every student can come first in the exam? In fact, exam results is something which is disastrous. There is joy only in one family, but there is disaster in the remaining 39 families out of the 40 students. Because one student comes first, and 39 parents are chiding their child, why you did not come first? And unfortunately, this coming first is all rubbish business. It doesn't help anyone in the life anywhere. These are all just the simple numbers, and this creates a psychological stress. And this is evident from your data, saying that almost 103 children, or 12% students, had a significant psychological stress. Why <coughs> children should have stress of the examination or this thing? Now, this culminates into the lack of physical exertion. When you've got a mental stress, lack of physical exertion, depression increases. And in fact, the incidence of suicides in the schools and colleges is significantly increasing. And this is a matter of worry. Because incidence of suicide, I am not a psychiatrist, but as a common man, I can just tell you what is my opinion about it. This tells us failure to go. So why children should fail to cope in their early life unless they have been put to too much of a pressure? 
So children must be allowed to have a lot of physical activity, eat proper and eat healthy. Nobody wants children to be sad, but nobody wants the children to eat fast food three times a day or four times a day. Having a pizza or a burger once in a week is fine, but if that becomes your primary food, and like in bygone years, our food was very healthy. In fact, if you go through the nutrition books and new diet advice, there are more fat diets which are extremely useless, have been discussed a lot in the scientific world. In, to give you a, just num, some names of the diets, like Atkins diet and this diet and that diet, good for the health. But at the end of the day, when you go down, sit on the proper constituents, you will realize what has been traditionally cooked in our families according to the season is the best possible diet. And, and that is what we call as a grandmother's <coughs> advice. Now, whatever she says, whatever she cooked, and whatever she told your mother, that was always a proper diet for the season. And once your diet is proper, you've got a good physical exercise. If you are physically fit, obviously, as my friend told, that then only you can be mentally fit. And if you've got a mentally fit and a physically fit, then only you can have a good development of yourself as a child, as well as you can <coughs> become a good Samaritan, a good citizen, and that is the, what is the value for the nation. The nation should look forward to the young <coughs> youngsters who come up and take the burden of running this country, or running their establishment, running their society. What a doctor has to play a role in this. In fact, you will realize majority of the doctors say that we are stressed out. We've got too much of a work, too much of a problem from the patients, litigation issues, and this one. And I don't want my child to become a doctor. This is commonly heard in the medical parlance. It's a bad news. It should not happen that way. In fact, if you sit down and look at the medical profession, it's one of the most passionate professions. Here, you have everything, whatever you want. You get enough dignity, enough respect, enough satisfaction. The mental satisfaction of treating somebody with empathy, compassion, is always much more rewarding than any financial benefits. Now, why the medical professionals are losing their faith in their profession? The number one reason for this is stress and too much of expectation. Okay. Now, if you look at the all other professions, and if you've got close friends in that profession, and you listen to the insider stories, they are no, no better. They, all of them have stress. But if you ask me at the end of the day, I was delivering a lecture a couple of years back, uh, oration at my own institution, and it was entirely like medical profession, paradox of prime time. What I mean by paradox of prime time is that the development, or what you can say as advances in medicine, have reached its peak. So you, <coughs> the human body has been discovered right up to the point of a molecule. You're talking about the cell, you're talking about the cell organelles, mitochondria, how they function, how they cause the disease. You have come to that level. You can assess accurately, non-invasively. You've got a CT scan, MRI, you've got a joint replacement, heart replacement, liver replacement. Everything is happening. But the satisfaction of the doctors and satisfaction of the patients is decreasing. Number of litigations are increasing, and doctors are being accused sometimes about the professionalism, about the what they, uh, like they are making more money. Why this type of a paradox should happen? There are both the sides. Number one, on the medical side, on the doctor's side, is that when you have got too much of a technology, you lose touch with sympathy. You lose, you lose the touch with the passion. See, a patient needs more comfort than cure. Out of 100 diseases, I can assure you, 
there are 90% diseases which are incurable. Incurable in the sense like diseases like diabetes, hypertension, they are all need lifelong treatment. And majority of the diseases like common cold and all, which are self-limiting, which do not need a medicine. Whether you give them a tablet or you don't give them a tablet, third day they are going to be all right. Now that is why we all the time keep on saying that doctors, <coughs> patients need more comfort than cure. So if you are interested in knowing a patient who has got a fever for one day, performing 100 tests on him, and at the end of 100 tests we say that probably I don't know what happened to you, but today you are all right. <laughs> so this gets into the trouble of doctors making unnecessary tests, doctors making more money, and you say that I want to be accurate. I want to give you exact diagnosis, which is not possible. So these are all simple minor illnesses, and for which if you've got a sore throat, or if your throat is infected, grandmother used to give one haldi, one spoon of haldi with a glass of milk, and that used to cure your problem. And it took 100 years for us to recognize the potential of haldi, or <laughs> and then when Americans wanted to patent it, we caught up and said, no, 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 no. We have been doing this for the last 100 years. <laughs> but this cannot be patented. So what we need is a more comfort, more compassion towards the patient. What has happened on the other side is that now patients think with all because of the modern development, they want to be immortal. And that's wrong. Nobody is immortal. If anybody thinks that he is going to be immortal, he is making a mistake. So patients want complete cure, best possible treatment, and least possible expenses. This is not possible. This is not a problem. And that is why they have got undue expectations from the doctors. Doctors in the sense, medical professionals. Secondly, what is there are a lot of doctors here and a lot of non-medical staff, persons are here. The cost of the medical treatment is not dependent on the doctor alone. Doctor is one hundredth of the problem of the cost. Because hospital cost, medication cost, instrument cost, it is all beyond the purview of a doctor. And these are all are in the purview of the government or in the country's policies and strategies. So India is a country where there are the highest number of medical colleges in the world. India is the fourth largest country in pharma manufacturing, drug manufacturing. But the staff is two-thirds of the country does not have access to the proper medical care. So these are all the irregularities. And then you think that you are practicing medicine in this unjust world. I just want to bring to your notice two things. On the Satyamayama Jayate, everybody must have seen Salman, uh, Amir Khan's program on the medical profession. It was a blatant lie. It had violated all the basic principles of the uh, body can say, very casting. Now, what he showed on some patient, the husband he brought, he told that this patient underwent a transplant without a consent. So this lady in subject who underwent a transplant was a planned cadaver transplant. Cadaver transplant waiting period in this country is nothing less than six months. So no transplant can be done like this without consent. Now, we can did a program on Khap Panchayat. He brought the Khap fellows also to discuss. He never invited a doctor to the program who was charged that he performed a transplant without a permission. It, now, those who are medical doctors, they will understand what is meant by doing such a major procedure without consent. And, it, and this program becomes a strong hit program. Second thing, what he talk, talked about is generic medicine. He still does not have an idea what is meant by generic medicine. Now, this has become a fashion with the patients to come and say, don't write me expensive medicine, write me generic medicine. That is not the issue. 
what happens globally if a pharma company discovers one molecule and starts marketing that molecule so that molecule marketed by the pharma company who discovered it or who manufactured it for the first time is called as originated product majority of the products have what you can call as a <coughs> patency rights so the patency rights in different countries vary in western countries there is a product patency suppose x company produces omeprazole now for first 7 years nobody else can produce omeprazole and if they want to produce omeprazole in that 7 year patency period they have to give a royalty to the primary company so the second company can never have a cheaper product than the primary company so obviously nobody markets india follows the process of process patency if a company does produce a medicine omeprazole and some other company produces the same omeprazole by a little different process so they are not bound by the patency and that is what happens in india 99% drugs which we get in india are generic drugs so anybody after 7 years of patency law completion anybody can market and then the other companies who market other than the originators becomes generic so in india you will find if 99% products are generic what amir khan must have intended to call it as a generic are the products what we call as a bombay market so bombay market products are the ones which have no what you can say there are no quality control the tablet price of a paracetamol maybe one 10 paisa which is almost impossible to produce so in 10 paisa tablet what you are getting god only knows and now these are type of products which have been sold to the government in uh, i don't know how many of you remember the famous jj tragedy of glycerol the glycerol was sold to the government of maharashtra from a company like this which was extremely cheap cheaper than actual production of the glycerol and hundreds of people lost their eyes and there were serious complications so this lentin commission was appointed this went on for 15 years one chief minister one health minister of maharashtra died of heart attack during the proceedings <laughs> and still we are talking about the generic pets not knowing what it is meant as what this was a most popular show about the medical profession in last say whatever 50 years or so as contrast to that i'll remind you there was a film called ek doctor ki maat starring pankaj kapoor and shabana asim so this film could not be released in this country because no producer thought no distributor thought that they will make money and this was a story about a government doctor who wants to do extraordinary research in his community and help the community with a better development and this poor fellow gets entangled in the red tape his boss his administrators in the hospital finally try to prove that he is a cheat and they try to put him in the jail and fortunately he escapes out of the country and that was the story of the eight doctor team if you look at the medical professionals there is a significant amount of a brain drain all good doctors say when i go to the american liver meeting okay sometimes i wonder this is american liver meeting or indian liver meeting <laughs> the president is indian the first speaker the opening batsman is indian and if you go through the list of the speakers almost 50% of them are indians so these are the people and they have gone up by their extraordinarily <coughs> for extraordinary performance in medicine and that is why they are highly respected in the western society so why when it happens that way why these people in the first place have left this country and even today lot of good doctors or a good you can say the software professionals majority of them are leaving this country and going away so this is a matter of concern and this type of things can be rectified by all of us at our own level who can take charge and for everything 
what I discussed, like what I talked, you need a good mind, good body, and a good <coughs> frame of mind to see how you can project. And I was extremely impressed when I looked at the centenary program of this institution, how they had projected on various aspects. And this is, I believe, is the 98th aspect. There are two more <laughs> remaining, and they will have 100 different aspects dealt in this. So, uh, with these simple words, okay, and what, what I call as a common sense message, I again thank all of you and conclude my speech. Thanks. Thank you very much, sir. All the dignitaries are requested to take their seats on the dais.